Yes, sir. Hello. Okay, so I think we can sm start now. Seems that uh, almost uh, everyone has joined. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. My name is Puyan. I'll be lecturing for strategic management class for this course. And uh, first, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves and I'll give you uh, the microphone to talk for a couple of minutes and give us a little bit of your background and wh where you come from, like what industry, what is uh, your major, and uh, then uh, we'll go from there. So first I start with myself. I have done my MBA in international business and uh, I'm glad to teach strategic management for this course. and. Uh, uh, I'll give the microphone to Mr. Uh, Javad Rafa first. So, Mr. Rafa, can you hear me? Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Are you there? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me, Mr. Rafa? Okay, there seems to be a little bit of problem with your voice. Uh, would you like to try again? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Hi, hi, Base. Uh, would you like to go ahead because Mr. Rafa seems not to be able to uh, speak. So please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, sir. Uh, as I uh, introduced uh, myself uh, before, this is Pais Sharaf uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, Mr. Faria, would you tell me about the work with the Science University and their program? Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I had the information before uh, applying for this uh, university. But uh, if you tell me about the multiplication of this uh, university in uh, Malaysia, about the degree uh, values in that place. Uh, Right. Okay. Very good. Yes, I know. I know that you introduced yourself once, uh, but because uh, like everybody seems to have joined us, maybe you just give us a short introduction and then uh, we will answer your question. Okay. So should I introduce myself? 
Yeah, just a quick introduction, like uh, your your name and then uh, your educational background and where you work right now. Yeah, exactly. So as I discussed it before, uh, my name is Qais and my second name is Sharaf. Qais Sharaf. I uh, graduated from uh, Kardan University in uh, 2010. I'm a fresh graduate from BBA specialization in uh, management, uh, and now I'm working in a bank as a marketing officer. Beautiful. And I'm Thank one you. of the uh, students of uh, Wilfred Science University. Fantastic. So let's uh, hear everybody, and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, Les. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Zobert, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, Ahmad Zubair, uh -huh. speaking from Mazar Sharif, uh, working in GI Tech. I have uh, completed my Bachelor of Business Administration in year 2007 from mm -hmm. Pakistan, and uh, I'm a student of Worldwide Sciences. That's it. Beautiful. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Piyasi, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me, please? Yes, beautiful. So, could you please go ahead and uh, give us an introduction from your uh, for your name and Mr. Vapa? Okay, there seems to be a problem with your microphone. Uh, how about you, Mr. Muhammad? Mr. Khan Muhammad, can you hear us? Excuse me, this is Elias. Uh, did you just hear me? Oh, now I can hear you. Okay, go ahead, Elias, please. Uh, give us some introduction about yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Ahmad Elias Riyasi, and uh, I am in Afghanistan working with, with, with one of the United Nations agencies here for yeah. almost now 12 years. I was graduated from the medical faculty in the year 2000, but uh, in practice I've worked and in project and program management area in the United Nations uh, offices inside and outside Afghanistan. Uh, and now I'm here to learn the MBA course and uh, together with other classmates make my best efforts to succeed the course, uh, inshallah. Beautiful. Thank you very much for the introduction. So let's see if Mr. Vafa could uh, try and introduce himself as well. Uh, are you able to uh, speak, Mr. Vafa? Is your problem with your microphone resolved? Can you hear us, Mr. Vafa? Okay, so is that I can't. So, how about you, Mr. Khan Mohammed? Can you speak? Oh, 
Okay. Uh, so I have the confirmation from Mr. Rafa that he you can hear us, but for some reason we can't hear you. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, but Mr. Muhammad, Khan Muhammad, can you hear us? Okay, let's try Mr. Zubair. Uh, Mr. Zubair, can you hear us? Could you please give us some introduction about yourself? Yeah, I just introduced myself. Yes, yes, but uh, for the class, because not everybody was here, so we are doing it one more time. Just a very short introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Ahmed Zubair. I'm uh, uh, working at GIJ's office. Uh, and uh, I have been uh, graduated in 2007 from Pakistan uh, from Bachelor of Business Administration, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. So, uh, let's just start uh, because some of us seem to have some problems with the uh, voice, so we'll go uh, for the introduction later. So, let's just start with the syllabus of the course. Uh, uh, as you know, the name of the course is a Strategic Management, and uh, uh, I have prepared the syllabus of the course. As you know, here here you see my name. My name is uh, Puyan uh, Part. Uh, okay, and uh, here is my email. You can all. Uh, feel free to email me anytime when you have questions or any any problem with your course or any help you need. You can always feel free to email me. We have 10 sessions uh, and uh, the book that you're going to use is a Strategic Management by Garth uh, Saloner and Andrea Shepard. So this is a very uh, practical book. I, I understand that most of us come from uh, business backgrounds, we have been involved in different companies and uh, uh, we have a lot of experiences. So what we need not, is not necessarily just theories, we need a lot of practical uh, cases and practical ideas so that you can easily apply to, to your corporation or wherever you work. So this book is a very a useful book. The, these professors have provided a very useful book based on their experience, so they have a lot of cases in those books, and it gives us a lot of exposure to, to, uh, you know, our courses. I see that there's another student just joined us. Hello, Mr. Spola. Um, okay, and uh, the let's go from the course assessment. The course assessment we have four major parts. The 25% is the group discussions at the end of each session, and 25% is uh, class participation, 25% is final group project, and 25% is uh, individual case presentation. So uh, all these uh, together will uh, help you to uh, get some idea about how the course is going to be assessed. So now I if anybody has any questions so far, are there any questions? You can, okay. Yes, Mr. Riyasi, please go ahead. Uh, are we going to get uh, these notes that appear on the screen? Are you going to get it? From yes. Also? yes, absolutely, absolutely. We we have uh, notes and presentations for every chapter of the book and definitely you will get those uh, PowerPoint slides so they are for, for you those are like extra uh, tools for you to understand the, the course uh, content at the same time you have the book and you can study that and we will have discussions at the end of each class and we have cases and that all together will help us to uh, get a good understanding and good grasp of strategic management and how to apply to our uh, careers. Is there any other yeah, questions? 
Yeah. Okay. Any other questions so far? Sir, uh, what about the final exam and the midterm exam during the course? Okay. So about the final exam, uh, basically the major uh, assessment would be your your projects. Uh, okay. I would love I would love you to have uh, group projects like. Oh, yeah. I will make groups, uh, like groups of two or th three or four. So you will work on on a on a project together, and that will be 25% of your assessment. And then you have a final project, which is like an individual project, and that would also help you to, um, you know, be assessed. So about the final exam, I'm not going to give you a final exam because uh, our course is online and uh, yeah. and basically we are focusing on practical side of the strategic management. But I will give you some cases like they are like quizzes. So I will give them in the in each class. So when you use yeah. and you will discuss based on your discussions, you will get a scores. Your, your participation in the class, when you answer the questions, and and then how you present the, the your your group project, your individual project, and and also those discussions that you attend in the class, all those together will uh, will give us a very good idea of your your score. No, oh, thank you very much. Beautiful. You're welcome. Is there any other questions so far? No, thank you. Sure. Yes, sir. One more question about the specialization. Because uh, uh, in marketing, uh, finance, uh, strategy management, and IT, because we uh, have three or four options. But uh, what about specialization? And which semester is the specialization? Specialized? Okay. The specialization would happen at the end of the, the last semester you will choose. As far as I know, you will. You'll choose your specialization at the end of the, the course, like the last semester. Yeah. You can choose where you want to specialize. Okay. So, yeah, by then you will get a good idea of where, where you feel comfortable to go for and which, which courses are the best for you to, to study more and what, what areas is, is your, your, your interest. So your last semester is where you can choose your, your uh, specialization. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm interested two semesters uh, generally. That's right. That's great. All right. All right. Great. Beautiful. Okay. Any other questions so far? Okay, Mr. Vapa. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we can't hear you yet. Have you been able to fix your microphone problem yet? Mm. Okay, Mr. Nababi, can you hear us? Could you please could you please go ahead and but uh, still have all all your words? Okay, yes, uh, unfortunately we can't hear you yet. What you can do, you can write, uh, you know, you, uh, as a note, you can write your question to everyone, and then we will, we will, we will read it from there. So write down uh, your question down there for, uh, and address it to send it to everyone. So that way we can we can read it all. Hello, Mr. Nazari. You have the problem of uh, voice too. Okay. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself, Mr. Nazari, and uh, give us a little bit of background about uh, your major and where you work right now? Do we have my 
Okay, go ahead. Do you have my voice? Yes, yes, we do. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kasim. Kasim mm -hmm. Shamsi Info. Uh, I currently work for the ACOM International Development mm -hmm. as a National Monitoring and Evaluation Officer. Um, and uh, I fortunately am one of the students of worldwide science. And uh, I am interested to do my majors in uh, strategic management. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much interested in that field. Uh, and if there is any other question, we will be happy okay. to answer. Okay, sure. So uh, I'm not sure if you were in the class when we started to talk about the syllabus of the course. Uh, right. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, well, I, I unfortunately couldn't uh, be. Uh, I could not attend from the beginning and uh, since I had problem with the uh, compatibility of the uh, WebEx software, I, see. Uh, I had to change laptops. So, uh, yeah, I could not participate. If you could tell me just uh, a few words in brief about this. Alert, Absolutely. That would be cool. And for your information, we have the recording of the class, which is now being recorded. So you can always refer back to it after the class, if you miss a class. You can always refer to the recording and and and, and uh, you know understand what what you missed in the class. So uh, as you can see, we have the syllabus on the screen, mm -hmm. uh, the name of the instructor, how we're going to be assessed, mm -hmm. and the objectives of the course that I'm going to go through right now. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. oh, Mr. Vapa, it seems you have uh, resolved your microphone issue. Uh, yeah, good evening to everybody. I'm sorry for the trouble which was uh, not in t intentional. I'm uh, Jawad Wafai speaking from Bamiyan, Afghanistan. I'm working uh, for UNICEA, the UN Refugee Agency, uh, Bamiyan office since 2004. And uh, we are mainly supporting the voluntary return of and the integration of Afghan refugees coming from neighboring countries. And since uh, 2011, uh, beginning this year, I have uh, been assigned to manage the field office in Bamiyan. I, I don't have any management background, and uh, I have not also studied in the field of management, and I hope I will learn uh, good things uh, during the, this MBA. And uh, thank you for tolerating me, for giving you messages and talking more about the problem of my microphone. And it is now resolved. Thank you very much. Beautiful. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so, is there any other questions so far? Shall we go ahead for the course objectives now? Do we have any other questions? You can always raise your hand, and it gives me that signal, and then I can I can see. Okay. So we can go ahead now. Mr. Rafa, do you have any questions? Uh, so far, no particular question. Okay. okay. Uh, one uh, thing which. Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. We can hear you. I was uh, going to say that uh, 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 when we are giving the uh, exam and there is a, is there any result that this student will fail or this student will pass the exam and he or she has to start again from the beginning of the semester? Okay, sure. Very good question. Okay. Uh, Basically, what's uh, going to be the case is that we, our co course assessment shows that we have group discussions at the end of each class. So those are like your quizzes. I bring cases to the class, and we discuss, you answer according to your answers. I will uh, understand if you're following or not and your attendance. Then 25% class participation. So participating in class is very important. When you miss a class, definitely will affect uh, the whole uh, 
understanding of the course because you'll miss some part and then I mean you can always refer back to uh, the recordings and sometimes cases might happen but definitely be appreciate if you attend the classes then we have individual and group projects which is very important basically because we are focusing on practical side of the the course we we definitely uh, require you to have a group project I'll I'll let you know exactly what is the project and you will uh, work together uh, as a group you will uh, make a presentation on that uh, topic and then also I will give you an individual uh, presentation so so those are very important in your in your uh, course assessment okay so uh, if there's no question so far I'll go for the objectives of the course so no more questions for now okay so uh, for objectives of the course basically a strategic management we we are going to understand at the end of the course uh, the core concepts of a strategy and a strategic thinking basically uh, we would like to know how to think it strategically wherever we work, whether you work in UN or as a commu communication officer or uh, all different backgrounds that you shared with us. So uh, it's very important to understand how to think it strategically. And then about industry and its competitive environment because uh, whatever uh, organization that you work for, it it falls into a, an organization. So, uh, and um, then also it's competitive environment. So the environment that you work for, there are competition going on. So we will try to understand how to beat the competition, how to be successful, and then uh, prepare a competitive analysis for that organization that you work for. So that is also very important to be able to analyze what's going on in your com uh, company or your uh, organization and be able to uh, compare it with other other competitors and then we will uh, be able to determine the core uh, competencies of a company and key success factors in an industry so what are the success factors I heard uh, from some of you you said you want to be successful and succeed in, in your career so definitely uh, a strategy would help us to be successful so what are the success stories so best practices of those companies that they were successful so we will also learn about best practices and then identify a company's strategy options for expansion so definitely we want to expand our businesses or organization or careers so definitely we need that so uh, so far is there any questions Okay. No questions. Okay, no questions. So uh, let's go to the course outline. The core concepts. What we mean by core concepts is uh, the strategy, the business model. So we have the strategy, which is the overall strategy of the company, the business model the strategic visions and missions and uh, financial objectives and strategic plans, the strategic intent, crafting the strategy and executing the strategy. So they, these uh, jargons and terms, they might uh, seem scary to you in the beginning, but we will go, go through each of them and we will uh, exemplify and give you a lot of examples from uh, business companies and a lot of different international companies so that you definitely understand what do we mean by each of them? But but those are the concepts and uh, you know topics that we will cover in the course. Then analyzing companies' external environment as well as internal environment. So uh, basically, externally means outside your country. What's going on? The strategic concepts of external environment, industry and competitive environment. And then uh, basically, Michael Porter. I'm not sure if you've heard of his name. He was the person. Uh, or the guru of a strategic management and who was uh, basically the pioneer who came up with a lot of concepts of uh, uh, 
uh, strategic management. So we will know about his uh, his ideas and change drivers. What are the drivers in change? And then market positions, strategic group mapping, identifying and predicting competitors' moves, and then. Uh, the competitive positions, what are the competitors' position in the market. So basically, uh, uh, I think I just, so far, okay. So it's here, uh, identifying companies' resources, strength, and competitive capabilities, and identifying companies' resources, weaknesses, and deficiencies. So basically, this is one of the major analyses that we use, and you could definitely use it in uh, in your own company. I will we will talk a lot about this uh, part number three and number two. How we will you know do these analysis, and it will help you definitely to to analyze your company and then compare it in the in the market. So it is a very important analysis. You you would definitely use it, and it's very helpful. Then at the end, we will also learn how to craft a strategy and developing a competitive advantage. So that is also very important, how to have a competitive advantage, how to to be uh, better than other companies and better off. So competitive strategies, strategic alliances and partnerships, mergers and acquisitions and strategies, vertical integration strategies, outsourcing strategies, and at the end, linking the strategies to companies' values and ethical standards. So, uh, so far, is there any question? Uh, now I just open for any questions. Would you like to uh, share your thoughts or any questions that you have so far? Okay, Mr. Nazari, please go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to uh, hear that guy's name, the so-called strategic management who was his name? Oh, Michael Porter. It's Porter's Competitive Forces. Michael Porter? Yes. You see my cursor is here. Porter. So his last name is Porter. So Michael Porter, the, he, 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 he's the, one of the pioneers who came up with the strategic management and how we can apply strategic management to businesses. So. We, we 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 talk about about a lot about him, and we will learn about his ideas in, in all through the course. And uh, 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 yes, uh, we will cover his ideas. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Is there any other questions so far? Uh, one more question. Sure, please, Mr. Kiyasi, go ahead. Or who is? Is it uh, you okay. you said you said that you are constantly moving moving somewhere. Uh, I don't see that window here on my computer. You're not seeing my window. Uh, oh, okay. Because it's supposed to be on your left hand side uh, where I'm sharing the syllabus for the for the semester for a strategic course. Do you see that on your left hand side? Anything like that? On the left hand side I see the objectives of this course, course oh, yes. outline. Oh yeah, and that's what that's uh, so that's you don't see my cursor. Uh it's it's basically I now I, I'm I'm putting it on a strategic and here is in Porter's competitive forces. Do you see that? Like after number two and the the third bullet is uh, Porter's competitive forces under the course outline. So court, course outline number two, which is anal analyzing companies' external environment. The third bullet yeah. is Porter's competitive forces. Um, but, yeah, An external environment in this three and competitive environment. Porter's mm -hmm. competitive forces. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very That's much. correct. You're welcome. Okay, I, I I saw that Mr. Riasi has a question. Please go ahead. You have a question. Actually, my my question was sort of exactly. I had the same question. Porter's competitive forces. I just knew from you that this is the name of uh, an author, right? 
Yes, uh, that's he's an author. Yes, I will I will share some of his cases in the class. So uh, as we go ahead, we definitely hear about how he he uh, basically uh, pictures a strategy and a strategic management. A lot of what we uh, study today as a strategic management is uh, due to his uh, research and studies. So. Uh, definitely, we will hear a lot about him throughout the course. Yes, because, yes, thank you. Because Porter is also a, a, another word in English. That's why we were a bit confused. Oh, yeah, sure. No, Porter's competitive forces is his last name, Michael Porter. So, yes. so basically, that's what we will going, you'll be going to study. Sure, you're welcome. Is there any other questions so far? Okay, Mr. Nawabi. Uh, would you like to uh, give us a short introduction of yourself and then uh, ask your question? I'm not sure if your microphone is working. And if not, you can always write it down as notes, you know, or you can write it down for us and we will... Okay. Mm, I can't hear you, so yeah, you can always write a note and to everyone, and we will all see your question. which I don't see any notes yet. Okay. So, so now let's go ahead and uh, start some, some concepts of a strategy. We will start the course. Uh, so we, we, are we all uh, clear about the syllabus of the course, how we're going to assess the book? Uh, I, I mentioned the book here. It's a very, very new book. It's a, it's a very good book by two Harvard professors. They are, uh, they're very well versed in what they do, and they have provided a lot of good examples and a lot of good cases in their, in their book. So they definitely, that's a very good reference. I would definitely uh, ask you to get the book and study the book as long as we go through the PowerPoint slides. PowerPoint slides are very helpful. They are giving you the gist of the book, but definitely I would suggest that you would read and study the book as well because some of you might not be from business background. So studying the book helps you a lot to, to catch on and to understand um, a lot of things because uh, like those of you who have uh, BBA or Bachelor of Business Administration or all those uh, business uh, background, it might be easier for you, but definitely I would suggest for you to study the book as well because uh, there are a lot of good examples in the book that helps you understand. And whenever, at, at the beginning of each class, when we come, uh, we, I open for questions and answers. So if you have any questions from the previous session that you didn't understand, you, you need some more explanation, we will definitely uh, stop and uh, try to answer your question and then go to the next concept. Okay, so no questions so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Reis, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, about the strategic management uh, books, uh, because uh, you can find the books, uh, but if you told me about the other useful uh, books uh, to find out uh, in our country of Afghanistan, I mean, other than that, books. Uh, I didn't. It's also, related uh, with uh, strategy and management, because we should try to find this uh, specific books for our study. But uh, if it's not available here in Afghanistan, then we should try to find some other books which are also related with this, uh, strategy and management. Definitely, definitely, you can do that. This is uh, this is the one I suggest. So if you can't find that book, you could always uh, go ahead and uh, try other books. So, but. But, and they are probably uh, similar, 
because uh, strategic management core concepts are, are pretty much the same. But I like this book much more because they have a lot of good examples. So uh, if you manage exactly. to get this, if you manage to get this book, uh, it will help you to understand it much better because many of books just give you the concepts, and they are good for uh, for for just schools, and you don't necessarily get a chance to understand how it applies. To, to real business practices. So it really helps if you can get this book because uh, I have studied that and it's a very good book. But definitely if you wouldn't be able to get the book, there are many other books that you can always try. So I see Mr. Nazari has a question. Please go ahead, Mr. Nazari. Uh, I actually don't have a question. Uh, I just have a suggestion for my class fellows. If they want to obtain a specific book, they can ask their friends who might be in India or Pakistan, and they can certainly bring, their, bring them the specific book they want. So it's no more a problem. And of course, yeah, the books are not available, not even in Kabul, but they can be obtained from India or Pakistan. Very good, thank you. And also, what I suggest to you is that uh, there are lots of e-books uh, which are electronic books so you could definitely buy them from Amazon so the book that I have here definitely you can get the e-book so then you can just study that on your computer or your uh, other devices that can uh, you know show you the PDF or all those uh, types of e-books so if you couldn't get the real hard cover book you can definitely get the e-book and you can buy it from all different uh, uh, companies like Amazon or eBay. So, uh, and uh, yes, it's definitely fine if you couldn't find it and study other books, but this is the one I really suggest and uh, I think it's a very useful book. So, any other questions so far? Okay, so since we are good to go for, for the PowerPoint slides, let's just start. Uh, without uh, much further ado, okay. So, uh, as you know, this is our course title. So, let's go to the next slide. Okay. So, as you as you remember, probably from the syllabus for uh, for the course, we have the core concepts of a strategy, the sustainable competitive advantage. So, sustainable competitive advantage is what we mean, but is that we want to keep and sustain our advantages. Let's say uh, you work in a company as a, as a communication officer. Let's say you work in United Nations. Let's say you work in, in an industry uh, like medicinal industry. Let's say you, you are in finance or uh, any, uh, any, any industry that you work for or any organization that you work for. You definitely need to have some advantages over other companies. So let's say when the UN has a, uh, has a project in, in a country or uh, in a certain area, they have to have some advantages so that they can, they can be successful. So that's basically, and you need to be able to keep those advantages. We, we don't need uh, advantages that are just temporary because, because you lose out. Then business model. Business model is very important. And uh, definitely you need a business model. Uh, to, to, to go ahead with your business. If you have a business without any business model, you definitely are lacking behind a lot of other companies. And that's what strategic management probably can help you to, because definitely you are already in a market, you are already doing a lot of these stuff that you're going to talk about, but are you really applying those into your uh, courses? So. Uh, I mean, your your careers and, or businesses. So definitely business model is very important, a strategic management process. Then this is very important. I see a lot of companies, a lot of companies that they have no idea about vision, mission, and objectives. So this is a, a must-have for any any business. So the, the moment you want to start a business, this is your step one to start with your vision, mission, and objective. So it's like basically like when you want to cook, you want to cook a food, uh, what do you need? Let's say you need some water, you need some oil. So these are like your step one. You need some stove to, to, to cook the food. So your vision, mission, and objective is the first step 
to start a business. So if if you are working in an organization and for some reason you, you don't know the vision and mission and objectives of the organization, that explains a lot that uh, you know there's a lot to be done because this is something to be shared with every single person in the whole company. Everybody has to understand it and everybody has to work for it. And we will definitely uh, work on that and understand what do we mean by vision, mission, and objectives. And then finally, the strategy, uh, a, sorry, a strategy making hierarchies. So what are the hierarchies in making the strategies? Who makes the strategies? Who is in charge of making the strategies? Is it, is it just the staff or the management? What level of management? And you'll definitely study on that. So uh, before I go ahead, uh, I just open for questions. Uh, Anybody, any questions so far? Am I going so fast? Or, oh, I see Mr. Zubair. Uh, please go ahead and, uh, okay. Yes, uh, the, about the business model, actually, I couldn't get uh, what they exactly mean by business model. It is like business plan or something. Uh, okay. I Very didn't get. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Very good question. Okay. You know, business model, what we mean is like, let's say you have, you're building a house, right? So uh, you have a model for your house. It's like how you want to uh, make your business, how you want to make your house. So by business model, it's not just a plan, it's, it's from A to Z about your businesses. So nowadays, there are, there are times that when you would start a business, you would you would you had no idea what what you're gonna do. You would just start something, and everything would happen. But nowadays it's not the case anymore. Nowadays you have to have a model. So your model tells you from A to Z. Let's say if you are in retail, let's say like Walmart or uh, any any company that provides like retail uh, services and products. They need to know what type of product, where they want to buy it, how much they have the budget. So from A to Z, who are their customers? So from A to Z, they have a model and they have to have it in advance. They can't just say, okay, let's just start the business later. We know who our customers will be. It doesn't work anymore. I mean, you would lose out. So strategy basically gives us some idea how to make that business model, how to how to be able to model our businesses and follow that model. It's like, like a house and you want to make a two-story building. You can't just say, okay, we just build uh, and then uh, see what happens. You have to know exactly the inches and, and how, how many square feet your house is going to be, how many, how many bricks, how many concrete, how much concrete, how much uh, of anything you need to use in advance, and then you just do it. So you can't just do it and then write the model. You have the model and then you follow. I'm not sure if I answered your question, Mrs. Obai. Yeah, I think it is only the basic structure of starting business. Uh, it may be uh, like it may increase by the passage of time, by the demand or these things. But uh, you mean that it's only the basic structure of the business? Uh, to uh, start the probably the the basic is you basic if you only mean it in a sense that it's definitely your first step. But it basically it's very detailed. So by business model, it's, a, it's not just the idea of you telling the type of industry that you are working at. Basically, it's much elaborate. It gives you a lot of information about what you're going to do. Let's say if I am an individual and I want to start a business and I'm looking for investors, definitely I need a business model to present to those guys and they will decide by my business model. So my business model should be that extensive and that that elaborate that when they hear me, they would say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to invest, let's say, $1 million in your business. So it couldn't be just uh, I tell them what kind of business, they wouldn't give me that $1 million. It should be, uh, you know, encouraging enough for them to understand how it's going to be done, then they will definitely go ahead and do it. So it's basic in the sense that it's necessary, it's the first step, but it's not basic that it's just like a couple sentences or a couple couple of slides. It's, it's, you have you need to know where you're going. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Any other questions so far? Okay. Uh, one more question. 
Sure, please, go ahead. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we are going to uh, study these concepts uh, in more depth, in details, as you said. Uh, but we need to do uh, and have some additional study also, uh, in particular for uh, persons like me with no uh, business background. Mm -hmm. uh, so can we find these concepts in the, in the book which we have uh, been provided by the link uh, from the Worldwide Science? In, I'm just uh, having that book in front of myself and exploring corporate strategy. Can we find these concepts there? Yes, definitely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you for your question. Sure. Uh, basically, the book that I suggested or any other uh, book on strategy will give you all these uh, explanations. And I will give you cases and we will try to understand where those uh, uh, concepts are in those real cases. So I bring you real life cases in businesses and then we will try to find what is the strategy, what is the advantage, what is the model. So all of these we will try to find in real cases other than the concepts in the book so that you can, you can uh, apply it. So uh, definitely I would suggest studying the book for, for those of you who don't have business background. It helps you a, a lot to, to, to understand the concepts that we are talking about because we, we definitely need practical examples, but at the same time we need to understand the concepts. I will try to explain them as elaborate as possible to tell you how they work and how they are, but, uh, but, but further reading is definitely suggested. I do suggest that you study on your own. I will give you a lot of uh, websites and links so that you can go ahead and study them. Uh, I will give you my own website. I have a weblog. I will communicate with you through my weblog. You can study a lot of things in my weblog. I write down, write down a lot of things there. In class, we can talk, and we will communicate through uh, through web, so that we make sure uh, we understand. I see. Uh, okay, I see, Mr. Uh, Zarkun. Uh, could you please go ahead and uh, ask your question? Okay, I can't hear you. You can always write uh, a message for us. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Zubair, uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Sorry. Um Actually, I didn't have any question <laughs> oh. anymore. Oh, okay, no problem, no problem. Because I saw the 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 hand, I thought you have a question. No problem. Yes. Uh, okay. So, any questions so far? Okay, let's go to the next slide then. Uh, I see Mr. Zobars. You can always go to the chat. I oh. don't know why it is. Uh, doing this. Oh, no problem, no problem. Okay, so let's go to the to the next slide. Okay, so as you can, as you can see, we start from the topic. So the first one was a strategy. So we covered that. What is a strategy? So a strategy consists of competitive moves and business approaches that managers employ to. So basically, by strategy we mean uh, those uh, concepts and uh, moves that your business takes to to employ. So basically, uh, the you attempt and you attr you attract and please customers. So that's a move. Complete successfully, grow the business, conduct operations, and achieve targeted objectives. So definitely, strategy, as you probably know, is a war term. Strategy was first to use in wars, like all those old ancient wars, like China, like empires. Although they used strategies to win the war, so uh, it's been it's been the case that they use it in in businesses a lot nowadays. So by strategy, it's like as if there is a war between companies. So how what makes let's say Dell or Toyota when Toyota is competing with Mitsubishi and all those different companies, 
what makes them win the competition? So they, they take some moves, they, they make some decisions, and according to those decisions, they make some moves, and then managers will use those decisions and employ them or uh, apply them to their businesses, and <clears throat> that's how they probably win, and eventually they will attract and please customers. Let's say, let's say you are a telephone company, right? So then you decide to give your, your customers some extra features for messaging, let's say pictures, <clears throat> you, you let them send pictures or different type of pictures. So that's an extra service you give compared to other companies that they don't. So that's probably something that attracts and pleases customers because they have something extra. Or you compete successfully means you compete with, let's say you work in Toyota and you're competing with Mitsubishi, your cars, eventually you do better. So uh, by let's say by different strategies that you use and then by doing all that you, you're able to grow your business because the idea of strategy and all all we talk about is growing because if you stay where you are is is not considered success success is always uh, with growing we need to grow it's like because because the thing is you can't just say I stay where I am and then I'm doing good because the, the, the case is uh, if you stay where you are, uh, then you won't be able to compete. means basically competitive advantage and all those strategies is because market is moving forward. If you stay where you are, you will lag behind. You can do okay for a while, but in the long run, you will lose out. And that happens to a lot of companies these days. They're doing great and suddenly they stop. And then when they stop where they are, means that's the end of their businesses. So growing is definitely a must for all different uh, organizations and industries. And then how you apply that into into your op operations, because because the operations side is also very important. They should go hand in hand with your strategies. You can't just be so optimistic about your strategies, and then in operation you don't be you won't be able to do it. You have to be able to also do it in the operation. So it's like they, they work together. It's not that I say I want to make an airplane and then I just have the idea and then I don't have the, the tools and I uh, like I can't make it. I need to be able to do and operate my, my plans. So they, they work together. And then finally when you do all that you will you will achieve your targeted objectives. So and as you can see, strategy involves making analysis and choices. So definitely we need analysis with the strategy. We can't just plan because this seems to be a common mistake that people think a strategy is just having some ideas. It's definitely wrong. We need planning, definitely analysis with numbers and figures and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, market research and then making choices. So all these are strategy. If any of them is lacking, we don't have the strategy. Okay, I stopped for some questions. Is, are there any questions so far? Yes, sir. Okay, please go ahead, Mr. Diasi. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, it has been a very interesting lesson. From mm -hmm. what you have been explaining uh, regarding the, the strategy, uh, is it okay if we, uh, uh, if you understand the strategy as, uh, as tactics, as uh, ways, as uh, the path uh, to use uh, in order to reach or achieve our goals and objectives? Uh, the best path and the best tactics that we, we should use. Is this another way uh, to describe the strategy or is, if it's uh, wrong, please correct me. Okay, very good. Very good question. You know, you. it's definitely a, a strategy, but it is not the strategy because because the concept of a strategy is, is much broader and uh, from just a tactic. Basically, uh, what what we mean by strategy is every every single move, every single tactic. So basically, just just a tactic 
would not be the whole concept of a strategy. As you can see here, a strategy is much broader than that. As long as you cover the decisions and analysis for your for your business, then you can probably say it's a strategy. But just one major, one single decision probably is a strategic decision, but it's not the the the, the, the general strategy of your company. To to give an example, uh, I used to work uh, for a project for for Toyota, so I help them to to boost up their their sales by giving them a strategy of, of like a, a, a particular customer service strategy how they would they would boost up their customers by by calling them back when they uh, return the cars and then uh, see how they're going so just calling them back this is a tactic or a strategy in boosting up the customer service but but the whole concept of strategy is is inclusive of several different tactics of let's say calling the customers back first how to track them so you, you make several decisions along the way from the production to, to 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 the part that you sell the car so each and every single one of those decisions or approaches or tactics they are part of your general strategy but the whole strategy of the company is much bigger uh, uh, did I answer your question, Mr. Tiasi? Uh, yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. I got it. Beautiful. Very good. Is there any other questions so far? Okay. I see a message from uh, Mr. Zargoon. Uh, no problem. Uh, you can always uh, refer back to the to the recording of the course, uh, you can always uh, uh, ask me or email me if you didn't get any part of the, the questions. You have my email there at the syllabus for the course, and uh, I will I have your email here. So what I will do, I will send you a general email, like a, a welcoming email to everyone, so that you guys have your emails as well, so we could have interactions among ourselves. So what I Sorry, what I would definitely suggest is that you, uh, with your classmates, you also talk with each other and try to understand the concept. So within this coming week that we, we will have our next session, you could definitely catch up with the parts that you didn't get it and you have some confusions. And by explaining to each other, you will definitely understand a lot. So you can email each other, you can, you know, connect to each other, and that helps a lot. And you would always are welcome to email, email me or contact me as well. I will give you my website also the, that you can go for my weblog and what I write, and then you could you would also get some extra explanation of the courses that we cover. I write uh, stuff about strategy and all those different topics that we cover. So that also helps. About uh, I mean, you could leave comments and everything. So we could uh, we could definitely communicate through. That, uh, that as well. So, is there any other questions so far? No problem. Okay, sure. So, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the second topic that we had in the, the first slide was sustainable competitive advantage. So, what do we mean by that? A company has a competitive advantage when a sizable number of buyers prefers products or services over the offerings of competitors. So that's pretty straightforward. When, I mean, to have a competitive advantage is when you are <coughs> winning uh, over other companies. Let's say uh, Toyota is doing a good job. So let's say among 100 buyers, the majority would go for Toyota compared to some other car probably in the market. If that is the case, then they have that competitive advantage. Let's say if you are in a photocopier machine company like Xerox or whatever brand like Canon, all those different brands. So if the customers would would prefer your your product over other companies, you have the competitive advantage. Let's say you are in service uh, providing uh, industry. Let's say you are in bank industry. Uh, 
So if your bank is preferred, if the majority of customer prefer to be a customer of to your bank compared to other banks, you have the competitive advantage at your bank. So basically, that's pretty straightforward. And then the company choose sustainable competitive advantage when it's when the basis for the preference is durable. That's very important. That's the key, because you might have uh, the, the, the 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 competitive advantage for a while, but then you lose out. For us, it's very important to have a sustainable competitive advantage. It means it should be durable. It should be lasting. If you have a good competitive advantage for only a week or so or a month or so or a year or so, then you, your, your business will die out. You, you got to make sure that your, your competitive advantage is going to last. That's, that's what you make sure in your business plan. Because when you plan ahead, you, you got to make sure you take care of all those challenges coming along the way so that you would be able to, to, to surmount and be able to, you know, um, be able to uh, cover those challenges, and then from there you would be able to, you know, uh, win over other competitors. Four possible strategic approaches to achieve sustainable competitive advantage. So these are four approaches that, that help helps us to achieve uh, sustainable competitive advantage. Being industry industry's low cost provider. That's pretty common. It's been the case for for a long time and that's how China has has been very successful and it's uh, basically winning the whole market. What they do is they, they give you low cost. Let's say let's say you have you're providing a pen, okay? So let's say the basic cost for a pen is like two dollars. If I am a pen producer and I give you the pen by half the price, let's say one dollar so two dollars, everybody would, would come to me and buy the, the pen from me because I'm giving a better price. I mean, it's, it's a pen, it's writing, and it does the job, so everybody goes and buys from, from me, which is, which is much cheaper. So that's what happens with China and all those uh, companies that are, or countries or uh, industries that are able to give you low cost. So by just giving cheaper product, because customers always do research, they always look for the better so as long as you give the cheaper price and your 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 quality is is okay, people uh, you, a lot of customers will come to you. So that's very common. Then differentiating features. That's that's uh, basically for the higher end. That's also a very important strategic move. So let's say talking of mobiles. Let's say iPhone is pretty pretty much like a high end uh, phone and it's its features, its like uh, capabilities of the phone, gives you a lot of preferences that you are paying the, the much much more expensive price for your phone, but because it's give you, it gives you a lot of benefits and it gives you a lot of quality, you are okay to pay like two times or three times or four times as much as you would pay for a Samsung or an LG phone, but because it gives you that different products or different features on the product, you will you'll be able to, to to go for it. And then narrow niches. Niches means like just top of the market. Let's say just just certain group of people. Like there is a certain uh, product line of Nokia, I'm sure you all know Nokia, but then Nokia they have a certain product called Vertu, which I write to everyone here down here. You can you can write it I mean, you can see how it's, uh, it's written. Okay, everyone. It's called Vertu. So the Vertu mobile is is produced by Nokia, but what it is, it's uh, basically a, a high-end product. It's uh, the, it's handmade. It's made in the United Kingdom. It's m very expensive. Only few of those cell phones are in the world. Let's say they make only 10, 20. Uh, cell phones of that type, that particular model, and they sell it to like very like very rich people, and it's like seventy five thousand dollars one phone. So that's a niche market. So Nokia has been able to to target a niche market, and then expertise and resource uh, strengths that the rivals cannot compete or imitate. That's also very important. You need to have strategies and you know, resources that are not. Uh, easy to be 
copy, you know. So if if you have a product and everybody can make it, you probably lose out very soon because like the reason Apple has been very successful is because they have been doing a lot of research on their products so their their achievements are not easy to copy what they do is not easy to to be able to copy very fast so that's like like their iPad you know the iPad has been there for a long time and it took them took other companies a long time to be able to have their own tablets so because the the iPad the general term for it is tablet so you see that how it helped them to become a market leader and establish their their competitive advantage over all those other companies. And after like a long time, when other companies come, Apple has already established the idea that it is the best tablet. So people will prefer it over other 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 tablets. So uh, I I stop here. I open for any questions. You can you can. Uh, raise your hand and talk or just write it down in the notes in the chat part. So any any questions so far? Okay, Mr. Nawabi, uh, please go ahead. I can't hear you. You can write it down in, in the notes. Okay, no question from Mr. Piazzi. Do you want to go ahead and uh, write out your question for us, Mr. Navabi? Okay. So I see Mr. Rafa, please go ahead and ask, uh, ask your question. Uh, no particular question, just I wanted to clarify that I understood correctly. We talked about uh, a strategy, uh -huh. and now uh, we are talking about competitive advantage. I understand that this uh, uh, competitive advantage is, in fact, uh, a strategic move uh, to win uh, or to beat rivals, if I'm correct. Okay. It's, very, it's a very good question. Uh, it's uh, a bit different. Uh, Yes, definitely we have a strategy and now we're talking about competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is your uh, your winning point. I mean, it is a strategy probably, yeah. but, but the thing is competitive advantage is what makes you, I mean, it's like, it's like tools. Let's say, let's say, uh, let's say you are making a food or making a product. Let's say you are in, in food business, right? So, Definitely, you would have a strategy for your company. Uh, let's say if you are producing noodles for 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 everyone, so that's your product. You have some strategy to produce that noodles in the market and everything. But your competitive advantage, let's say, in in giving those noodles to the customer, it would be or could be your your prices or let's say you know, the the quality of your noodles or certain features of those noodles that no other noodle will provide. So it's something that makes everybody prefer your noodles, you know? Or or let's say you work at a certain uh, organization. Let's say you are in a communication business. You provide cell phones and like, uh, you know, all those uh, different services by communication organization. So you have a strategies for sure, but competitive advantage is what makes people choose you, you know? So it's basically a major core part of a strategy, it's something that helps you to win over others. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Beautiful, sure. Okay, I see Mr. Zubar's uh, hand. Please go ahead and ask us your question. Yes, uh, I have one uh, simple question. Uh, does competitive advantage uh, results to monopoly of the companies or uh, it's just something else different from monopoly? Do we call, can we call that monopoly is also a kind of competitive advantage or? It's, it's, a, a, it's a, a, beautiful. It's a very good question. Thank you for that. Well, basically monopolies happen when you have a competitive advantage which is not possible to copy. 
that happened for a long time for Apple. They provided the the touch screen company, the touch screen touch screen uh, computers, and it, it was not copied for a long time. They, it was theirs, and they had the monopoly. Or Microsoft, you know, Microsoft has the monopoly almost. I mean, had it for a long time, and uh, so because the competitive advantage is so strong, and they have stuff that is not uh, possible to be copied, that makes you the only one, right? Sometimes it's helped by the government. You get you get the share, and they don't let anybody else to to uh, be able to to do that. So because that that's the difference of monopoly and competitive advantage. Definitely, competitive advantage can give you is something you need to be a monopoly. But being, having a monopoly, not necessarily you have the competitive advantage, uh, which I mean you have some, but it's like. When, when just the government is uh, helping you and you are the only service provider, then the, uh, probably your competitive advantage is just the support. You know, it's a kind of competitive advantage. But what I'm saying is, the what what we went through is in a free market. In a free market, monopolies are difficult to happen because when when it's free, everybody would get the access to those. Uh, you know resources that you have, so end of the day you will lose and you won't be able to have the monopoly, like what happened to Microsoft, to Apple, but there are certain times that you are the only service provider. So that is a kind of competitive advantage because you are the only one, but it's uh, it sort of challenges the idea of competitive advantage because competitive advantage comes when you are competing against others. Uh, did I answer your question? Thank you. Sure, very good. Okay, uh, Miss Aziza or Mr. Aziza, I'm not sure. Uh, would you like to ask your question? I see your hand raised. Uh, you could write it down for us, or you can speak it out. Uh, but uh, I can't hear you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you could write it down at the notes, Ms. Uh, Aziza. So for now, I go for uh, Mr. Nazari's question. Please go ahead, Mr. Nazari. Sir, I'm just not uh, quite clear about the third uh, bullet point in the second section. Which is focus on narrow niches. Could you please uh, tell us more about this? Okay, sure. Uh, beautiful. I see that it's also Mr. Uh, uh, Ahmad Javid's question too. Okay. Uh, narrow niches is uh, when you have a certain type of customers or certain type of market which is very narrow, and you are just targeting those those people. So. As an example, I, I exampled Vertu. Vertu is uh, is basically one of the single products. They don't even call it Nokia. You know, you all know Nokia, right? So Vertu is a certain product line of Nokia. It's basically it's called it. It's a different brand. If you sometimes when you go to uh, very high class shopping centers, you see an, a Vertu shop. So their their cell phones are handmade. They are made of uranium and all those different stuff. It's very light, it's very classy and chic and different. And for a cell phone, let's say uh, an iPhone will cost you well, like 400 or to $600. Uh, uh, Samsung could cost you like $200. But those phones will cost you $75,000. That's just one single phone, a cell phone, you know? So. What is special about it? They are targeting a certain market. It's very niche, very, very small, and it's like a certain type of people. They want to have their own cell phones that are like antiques, and not many of them there. So basically, so that's the niche. So you are targeting those guys, and mostly when you're targeting a niche, uh, you establish a relationship with your customers, and that helps you. It's a great competitive advantage. Because not everybody would be able to address a certain market and be able to satisfy their needs. So as you can see, there are 
some niche marketers markets that they they will stay there and they, they stay there forever. They they provide a certain type of services or products to certain customers and they are mostly very loyal to you. Uh, I'm uh, did I answer your question? Okay, beautiful. So I see another question here. How can we make a proper search for market in Afghanistan? As everybody know, we have open market. Is there any difference between Afghan open market and other terms based markets? Okay. Um, do you know? Um, okay. First of all, uh, Mr. Zargun, you need to know what is uh, your 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 industry. Okay. So uh, you need to know what industry you are at, what is your product or services, and so to to make uh, to 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 have a proper strategy, basically, you need to analyze what you have that is different from others in the same industry. So if you have something which is uh, which is I can provide and everybody else can provide. Probably it's not a, a strategy. I see Mr. Reis is speaking. Do you have any questions, Mr. Reis? No, sir. No, sir. Mr. Reis. Oh, no problem. No problem. Okay. So, uh, yes. So basically, you got to understand what you have, which is different. So, to make a difference, definitely it takes a lot of analysis. It takes a lot of uh, uh, market research. It takes a lot of expertise and skills in your in your in what you do. So if, let's say, if you are in a company that provides certain products, let's say, so let's say you're a publisher, you publish books. So you have to publish books different from other other companies. Let's say, let's example Amazon. You know, Amazon, uh, they what they do, which is different from everybody else, is that they give you the products and the services that you want. You can buy them online very easily. And then, at the same time, it's much cheaper and with a higher pro higher quality. Let's say when I buy my 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 stuff from Amazon, I'm sure that when I get them, they have a very good quality. And at the same time, they they get here with the convenience that I just order them online. So that's a competitive advantage, you know. So it's not easy for a company to provide online services that they can buy stuff and then have a good quality and have the satisfaction of the uh, customers. So they have, a, uh, they have a good competitive advantage and they're able to sustain it. So uh, I hope I did answer your question. Please uh, let me know if, if you got your answer. Uh, and I saw Ms. Aziza was also asking about niche markets, which we did talk about. So I hope we did cover that. Uh, looks be more or less like legal. Oh, uh, Ms. Wafa, uh, it's not legal bribery. It's definitely different. Uh, well, what we mean uh, by uh, narrow niches is when you are able to target a certain uh, group of customers or market that nobody else can target. You know, so like Vertu is a good example, and um, so that's not uh, bribery at all, because uh, it is narrow. Not because you are given it, because basically the market that you are targeting is much harder to satisfy. You know, so you are, they have a certain preferences. So their preference is different from general preference. So you cannot just expect you cannot produce where to mobile and expect everybody use where to because not everybody can afford it. So if you use that niche market for a general market, you will definitely lose out. So and it's yeah, it's not uh, legal bribery. Low cost means low quality. No, um, Mr. Nawabi, not necessarily. Low cost sometimes we mean high quality with a lower cost. Let's say, let's say uh, computers. Let's say Dell. We are comparing HP, Dell, uh, you know, Asus, Acer. Sometimes, you, like Dell and HP, they are like, or Compaq and all those brands, they are pretty much the same. They What they do is they are giving you the same quality, the same product, but the one which gives you the better quality with the lower price is the winner. You know?
so uh, uh, that's 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 what it is. So everybody is competing. It's like when everybody has the same level. So why should I buy your product when everybody is giving me the same product? Give me a reason. That could be a low cost. It means you give me a one dollar cheaper uh, product. And then he says, "It's about you don't have such a company products." Uh, I would assume you're talking about niche markets. We have a lot of them, actually. You know, uh, let's say service companies. There are a lot of them has only traditional agriculture products. Um, you know, uh, I am sure. I mean, niche markets are not necessarily very high quality products that are seventy-five thousand. They could be just very cheap product. Let's say, let's say. Uh, there, there, there's a company here called uh, 99 Store Shop. So 99 Store Shop is everything there is one dollar, right? So 99 Store Shop, in a sense, it could be a niche market because not everybody would like to get that one dollar product because they, their quality and everything is not necessarily the best. So that's also a niche market. So it's not necessarily it's very expensive or very, uh, very classy. It could be. The opposite, but the thing is, just a small part of the market. So you are not applying the whole general thing for for that market. So that's that's probably the the reason. So now it's okay. Oh, very good. Uh, how uh, how to enhance resource strengths or rivals? Okay, to enhance uh, strengths over rivals, you would definitely need to 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 do uh, continuous research. You need to be able to. Keep those advantages that you have, uh, uh, you know, for for the long time. And to to be able to do that, you need to be competing against co companies as fast as they go. So as I said, you can't just stay where you are and have a competitive advantage or uh, strengths over other rivals. You need to move forward very fast. As you can see, like Apple, uh, like iPhones, iPhone 4 is pretty uh, amazing phone. But what is what's happening now? iPhone 4s is coming. I mean, they don't give you time; they just give you next one and next product and next product because that's how it is. Because if they just give you the iPhone 4 and then it stop there and say, "Okay, we come back next year and you 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 enjoy the product," it doesn't work because uh, because other companies are hard working so hard. So you have to give us next uh, next best product of yours. That's how you sustain. Okay, to enhance, and then you satisfy the need of a specific group of people in the market. The way I see it. Okay, yes, uh, Mr. Nazari, you 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 got it right. That's that's true for uh, the uh, niche market. Competitive price, not low cost. Yes, that could be, but sometimes it's low cost. China is doing the low cost. It's not necessarily competitive price because sometimes the products they don't have the quality. But they have the cost, so cost sometimes is very important, you know. So it's it's both. How how to maintain high quality with low cost? How to maintain with high quality with low cost? We will go very deep in that, but mostly what we do is like economies of scale. We have better technology that gives you a cheaper production cost. So that is also a, a, a you know a possibility, uh, Mr. So far, one okay, and then uh, they sometimes call it best quality for money. Yes, good quality which is lowest price possible. That's that's true. Competitive price is different from low cost. That's true. Uh, sorry, best value for money. That's even better. How can we get the slides that you are reading and talking from? Also, if it's possible, we have the slides in advance. Yes, um, as I as I understand, they would put it in your my LMS, where you can go and put your all your slides. I have given them all the slides for the whole semester, and I would definitely suggest you go go through the slides before we start. Let's say for the next session, go through the slides of the next session beforehand, study them, and then uh, we can we can uh, you know. Uh, when I talk about it, you already have some understanding of it. So if you can just go through the slides before I even start talking about it, that that probably helps you a lot. And you have it on your uh, where can we get them from? Uh, you can get it from your uh, my LMS. Uh, you, uh, you can definitely contact the the, the admin uh, 
Mr. Khosravi would definitely help you to go there. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next. Okay, we started six. Okay, so I think yeah, we got a what is LMS? LMS Learning Center is it is the learning center and um, uh, Mr. Khosravi would be happy to help you to access those slides. Um, I'm not sure. I I'm told that uh, most of you would be in the next class, which is the marketing, which is going to start like in a uh, very short time. I I I extended the time. It was supposed to be. Uh, uh, about half hour ago, we we were we were supposed to be finishing half hour ago, but uh, what happened is uh, we started class later because of some technological issues and everybody was not present at the class. So I'm hoping that next week we would have all the students because I have 30 names in my list that not all of them are here. Probably they are experiencing some issues on their uh, computers or internet and they couldn't make it. So. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I s I'll see you all on um, next week for the uh, business strategy, and um, and then we, we would be able to talk. Some of you wouldn't be able to talk today. Probably you had some uh, speaking problem with the, your microphones and technical problems. So I hope you have enough time to fix those for them by next week. And um, uh, uh, it was great. Your participation was awesome. You were using the the chat system and the speaking. Uh, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, next next session, I will I will share with you what is your group project and your uh, your individual project. I will let you know what it is, and then you will be able to uh, go ahead and do that. I see uh, Mr. Fiasi has a question. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, we enjoyed uh, the class and we enjoyed your explanations as well. Uh, there's one uh, suggestion, if possible. Sure. Uh, at the end of the class, I don't know, you, you were giving us some assignments or something? Yes. Uh, based at the end of the yes. Uh, by end of each class, uh, we didn't make it this, this session because it's, it was the first session, like, inter... Uh, are you finished with your question? Would you like to continue? Yeah. Yes, actually, um, what I'm referring to is that uh, for our better understanding, uh -huh. um, if, if we didn't do the assignments, maybe it's already, um, we have already considered this, but I'm just wanting to uh, make sure that, uh, suggest, uh, just want to make sure that we suggest that this way that we could understand is that. Um, Maybe there are some two, three core questions regarding all what has been explained by you or sure. any other uh, professor. Okay. Uh, that helps us to understand that lesson. That way we can understand better. Because at the end of the lesson, you ask us three or four questions, then we, next day we want to answer that. In mm -hmm. fact, that's a review for the whole lesson. That's what I mean. That's okay. be great. Very good. Very good point, uh, very good suggestion. Basically, what I'm going to do from the next sessions onward, uh, as I said, this, this session we couldn't make it because, uh, um, because we, have, we spend a lot of time on techn technological things and, and also introduction, introducing the syllabus and everything. But every session after, the, we, we spend like half hour or 20 minutes on a case. So I give you a real case. So what you do, you just uh, study that, and uh, I mean, like in two or three minutes, and then we discuss and we try to apply the concepts that we we, we discuss to the case. So the case is like I give you a real case, a scenario, what happened, and then you will tell me what is what and what is let's say business model, what is the low cost, what strategy did did they use. So uh, yeah, yeah. I had the case this exactly. session, but. The, but unfortunately, we are out of time. We we have about like four minutes to go to the next class, which is marketing. So uh, um, we have to uh, almost finish the class now. Uh, I see one last question from Ms. Aziza. That what's the difference between business model and enterprise model? Uh, we will cover the business model next session. We didn't. I didn't get a chance to talk about business model, and I will explain it next session for you. 
Um, I enjoyed the class very much. Thanks for your participation. So I believe that most of you are in the marketing class as well. So I'll see you in a couple minutes, uh, in a few minutes in the marketing class. So uh, by that, if there is no other question, I will finish. Could you please redefine the strategy in brief? Okay, strategy is basically the the choices that you make to 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 track customers. So if you go back to the slide, the strategy right here is your your moves and approaches that you you employ to do all these these bullet points to attract customers, to compete successfully grow the business, conduct operations, and achieve targeted objectives. So a strategy is your moves to do all these together. So if you are, if you manage to do that, you, you have a strategy. So basically a strategy, uh, you use a lot of small strategies to, to, to uh, maintain and accomplish your bigger strategy, but basically that's what it is. And it involves, always it involves analysis and choices. So you always make choices according to your analysis. So that's the explanation to that, and uh, uh, the, by, by this I end the session, and uh, I thank you very much, and uh, I, I, I hope that next session everybody will participate much more. Uh, I, I love your questions and your, your suggestions and your ideas. We can all learn from each other, and uh, definitely we can, we can have a very exciting course together. So uh, thank you. So what we do, we just end this session and uh, go to the next class, which is the marketing class. So uh, you have a great time. See you soon in the next class. Thank you. And uh, just one thing before I leave, I leave my, my, my website down here so that you can also go to my website and uh, go to my weblog and you will you'll find a lot of things we can we can discuss okay you have a great time god bless you all see you see you in the next class